Hello everybody and welcome to Midas Mesh Free Basics webinar. My name is Gabriel Rode uh, and I will be conducting this webinar. I'm a CA software consultant here at the Midas Soft offices in New York City. I studied mechanical engineering at NYU Tandon School of Engineering. So I hope I'll be able to be of assistance today. We will be running through a total of nine tutorials just to show you how easy it is to use this different type of analysis and how fast it can be used when it comes to human time. Obviously, we will be cutting through the, the running times of analysis because it's just a waste of screen time and I don't want to waste your time. You came here to see how the program uh, interacts with the user, not to see how the program is running the calculation. However, I do understand that you want to know how long it takes for the analysis of each one of these cases. So I will be setting a timer and I'll show you when the running time is over, we will come back to the screen and I will show you how much time it took for each one of these analyses. Okay, so first of all, I think it's important to start by introducing Midas Mesh Free, this software. So let's understand what Mesh Free is about. Mesh Free Development History started to, as a concept, solve it for analyzing three-dimensional shapes. It was uh, proposed by some professors in the University of Florida and some other places in 2014. In August, it was picked up by Midas IT in conjunction with Samsung Electronics and the Minister of Startups and SMEs. And then basically it was developed and finally was delivered to Samsung Electronics to present it after roughly one year of development. Samsung Electronics liked, Samsung Electronics liked it and it helped us develop it even more. And now finally, in April of 2017, Midas 1.0 was launched and and it was ready for it to, for, to be used. It was introduced to different industries, to different uh, businesses for them to try. And then we had the official launch uh, for everybody with linear dynamic analysis function added and available to that the mesh that you guys know now. And the version that we will be working on today is actually Midas Mesh Free 3.0, which has some added features, but basically we just fixed on bugs. We're still we're working really hard on the next update that will bring nonlinear contacts and, and other important features. So the algorithm, this is the main thing. This is what mesh is about and what is so uh, cutting edge. And it's the fact that while other um, FEA technology, most of it uses meshes, which basically puts elements around a shape and makes uh, the elements that you use for finite element analysis depend on the shape of the model. The elements that we use don't depend on the shape and they're just orthogonal grid, grid locks that cut through the model no matter the shape of the model. So that makes it very easy to change the model to make it very complex and there is no need for human input in that respect. There's no need to adapt the shape of the element mesh to the shape of the object and knowing where to concentrate. The program does identify where the volume ends using energy functions and the Dirichlet functions and other variations of that that come within the algorithm to detect where the shape ends. And that's what is cutting edge. You will, like, it will really cut a lot of time and a lot of human effort when it comes to adapting the shape to the problem. So let's see, this is exactly what I'm talking about. We think current engineering that there's a lot of time that is spent in design, preparation of the model, and then simulation, and then is revised and simulated finally, and then there's a testing that all this has been translated from experimental to the software in which people spend now a lot of time in analysis and analyzing these simulations and preparing the simulations. So now we want to cut that and avoid all the time that is needed for a person to be sitting down and, and translating a model into a computer, uh, into something that a computer can understand. So we want people to spend more time in product design and and design testing and not that much time in, in, in translating the model to the computer so that the human effort can come from the human creativity, from the human knowledge, and not from this uh, unnecessary times of adapting the model. And we let also the fact that now the computer takes more responsibility, that means that if you have a more powerful computer, the total overall time will definitely be very reduced. But if you have a very nice computer, but you still have to sit down and fix your mesh, you're still wasting a lot of time that you don't want, a lot of human resource mostly. So the ultimate goal of, of simulation is to discover and resolve problems in the design stage. So we want to give people and engineers as much time in the design stage as possible without spending time on 
as I said, adapting the model. So the methodology for evaluation of structural safety is very important in this industry. And I'm just trying to go through all this quick because you guys can review it later. But basically, uh, what engineers look for the most special in structural failure is this mode of failure, which is yield, uh, buckling, resonance, fatigue, creep, and erosion. So those are the ones that we focus our software most for now, and then we'll be advancing on more interesting features, maybe CFD in the future, we don't know. But for now, we're focusing on what engineers in the structural analysis are most interested in, which is knowing what structural failure happened, because every type of device needs that type of analysis. The C8, this is an introduction from the training to the different analysis techniques that are in the industry. The ones marked in, in gray are the ones that are covered by the software. We have linear static analysis, normal mode analysis, nonlinear steady state heat transfer. And we also cover the transient response analysis, frequency response, response type of analysis, random vibration, fatigue, optimization. This is big, and we're trying to develop it more and more because we believe, again, we're trying to take time from the human and put it on the computer's hands. So optimization would be a great way for the computer to get more, uh, to help more in the design stages. So this is some examples of analysis functions that have been used in real life applications. We have, we did the rigidity analysis for a robot arm application, and we also have natural frequency for an engine block, a fatigue and, and a chair, safety verification, to displacement stress due to uh, thermal stress and a chip. Then we also have temperature distribution, uh, optimization of a bracket. You have laser tester and safety assessment, simulations of safety on a semiconductor equipment with vibratory load. This is just example, for example, cube type satellite, random vibration sounding that could happen. We will see how we go through the most basic parts of this type of analysis in this webinar. So we have the, the traditional workflow process, which is an FEM uh, process that most of the software uses which is basically you define the problem first, you have these dimensions, you have these forces or these uh, loads that you want to apply to it, and you have the material. So this is what you need to analyze. Then you idealize your model. So for example, if you have some type of symmetry in your model, or you, you see that the model is uh, uniform in some type of dimension, so you can reduce the number of dimensions. Like for in this case, you turn into a 2, 2D element, which uses symmetry in the Y, X directions. So you get rid of a lot of uh, volume that you don't need, a lot of things that parts of the model that you don't need to analyze really and that, that you can adapt to. And once you've done that, then when we go into the software and we define the material and define the elements and, and define what type of element you're going to use in and define uh, help the problem. Now, now it's when helping the problem translate the model, it starts. Then you do the mesh generation, you make sure that the mesh is not making any mistakes and you make sure that it's localizing in the parts that need most attention, and then you do the load input. Then is when you start adding the conditions and the boundary conditions and what actually defines the problem that you're studying. Then the software creates the element stiffness matrix, which basically like it makes the, uh, the values of each one of these elements. It calculates the energy equation for each one of them, and then we, it makes the actual the stiffness, it, you, sorry, it uses the stiffness equation on each one of these elements, and now sums up all these values to get the displacements that sum up in all these elements together as a mesh and how they are interrelated, and then makes the strain calculation and the stress calculation. That's basically how it works. So then from there, you start, you move to the result stage in step nine and 10, in which you study your deformation and you study the stress distribution. The deformation is basically to see if it's usable, if it's not gonna be too deformed or even break, and not give you an option to use this object anymore, and then once you understand that it's not that deformed, then you can look into the stress distribution and see what parts could bring a uh, risk of failure so that you always comply with your safety measures. So in mesh free is much simpler because we get rid of uh, the steps of definition of elements and mesh generation, it reduces to three steps basically, which is first you have a direct CAD interface in which you just created this CAD uh, model with SOLIDWORKS, Inventor, CAD, any of the main softwares. And then you import it into uh, mesh free, and it's automatically definition between the contact between the parts. Then you can define that, of course, if you want to change that, but it's automatically defined coming from the model. Also, the material, if you define it in your CAD, it will be translated the same, but you can change all that if you want. 
But once that's done, there's no meshing, there's no need for adapting or translating the surface or simplifying it. You basically just now define the load of under conditions to designate these conditions that are actually the, the, the setup of the problem and not the setup of the model. And then you can run the analysis and, and check the results and analyze how it works. And we have different tools that you can use very intuitive to understand what these results mean and what they translate to in an actual real life model. So as you can see, the steps are very much closer to what real life uh, design engineers would like to worry about instead of um, analysis, which is basically you have a model, you uh, you set up in a, you set it up in certain conditions that emulate what happened in real life, and then you run the analysis and see the results. So the questions I want to ask is what is the lower acting on the analytical target? Or does it act? Is it acting on statical dynamic? What is the design standard? Once you answer these questions which you can review in more detail if you go through this presentation on your own, but I will not stop that much time on this, but it's basically figuring it out what the conditions in which under your, in which your model is under, and then adapting your simulation to that. So these are the main questions that one has to ask. What is the load acting and the analytical target? And when does it act? Is this load static or dynamic? Because if it's gradual, it's also static. And then what is the design standard? How much deformation can I take? How much stress? how much uh, temperature distribution, all that. So now let's start with the actual software. So this is the G UI for the software. The main window that it shows you, I will go through it as soon as I open the program. It's like, it gives you an option to see the license. If you do the license and it shows you your uh, user ID, your authentication code and your password. So you can change that or apply it if you haven't done already. So if for uh, all of you that haven't gotten the program yet, this is what you would do. You would open the license tab here and then, uh, and then you have the option to see, to input your information that was given to you and that would activate the software. And then you have this uh, window here that allows you to see what the specs of the softwares are, what version you're using, how much memory is taking, that type of bit. And this is to create a new file and to open a, a new file. So then once you've opened a new file or, you, or you're working on a file, then you have this window. This type of window gives you the step buttons, which go in the three steps that I mentioned. The star in which you're going to define the material, like if you want to change it and you're going to upload your, you're going to define the type of analysis and you're going to upload your, uh, your CAD model. Then the analysis conditions with all the setup for the problem and then the results that you got from, the, from running the analysis and, and how you can play with it to see how it works. Then you're going to have a toolbar here. These are the tools that you're going to be using. This is to, uh, the selection mode, the deselection mode. This is a, it allows you to select surfaces around. So if you select a surface and you click this, it selects surfaces that are in contact with it, like around, surrounding that surface. So that's easy to select. This one is even better because it's the same function, but you can select what pitch angle you want. So if you have a curved surface, you'll see later, and you, can, you want to select other curved surfaces that are around it with a pitch angle of 90 or, or 30 degrees which is the uh, automatic setup, you can do that without selecting surfaces that would be at a 90 degree, for example. Then you have this option, which uh, allows you to change the, the, the way in which you select. So you can select usually with a rectangle when you drag and drop, but you can also use a circle or like a multi-point polygon. This selects all the parts, this deselects all the parts, and this function, one second, this function, I can tell you right now. Yeah, this function selects the front, oh yeah. So this function allows you to select the parts that, are, uh, that you can see only. This is to select the type of selection that you want to use. So for example, if you want to select bodies, surfaces, or labels, this allows you to cut, to make planes of, of cut through, so you can see through the model. So you can make it in all the directions and move the plane around. With this feature that it was probably in NFX, and we like to use it here too, to be able to see through the model. We have symmetry plane to, to see uh, to mirror it. So if, for example, you use symmetry, like we were saying in the FEM uh, traditional model, and you want to see what the actual model looks uh, after you've run the analysis, then you can use the mirror to see how, how that result would translate. This is the measuring, which allows you to measure any distance within your model. You have the work plane where you're going to be working, the view cube, which allows you to move around. I'll, I'll explain more about that. The analysis tree is all the analysis functions and all the analysis setup. The task trees are the things that you've been adding, contacts, boundary loads, and the unit converter for the type of units. Uh, and the output window, which gives you everything that is happening at the moment that the program is doing. So we have the step icons, as we said, the function icons. So inside of each step, there's different functions. 
that only until you complete one step, it allows you for the next one so you don't make any type of mistakes in the workflow and you're not uh, running around. Then the task tree and the an analysis tree, as you can see in the task tree, you can like select what parts you want to view. You can see the context, the constraints that you've added, the loads and pressure, force, temperature, whatever. They will also be represented on the work screen with different icons. And then you can see in the analysis tree, uh, the same thing, but it will give you a more uh, holistic way to see it and to see what parts are actually being added to the analysis. You can also drag and drop from the task tree into the analysis tree if you want to use the same conditions in a new model or a new analysis case. The toolbar, as we discussed, then we have the view queue. Uh, it's pretty much like any other view queue. You move around with these arrows if you want. You can hold it and drag it around if you want more freedom with the mouse. You can turn like this. This uh, tool allows you to uh, zoom in into a specific area that you select. This uh, gives you back to the isometric uh, initial view. Then if you press the, the wheel on the on your mouse, it, this uh, appears in the middle of the screen. That gives you pretty much the same options with the exception of these two added, uh, pretty useful, which is you save your own view. So if you found a view that is not in this setup and that is appropriate for your model, you can save it and use it again later. Uh, the output window gives you two major uh, type of data. The first is the warning and notifications. The second is the analysis model data and how the, it's progressing through the analysis. The unit displays, these are the units that are in, in the software right now. There's the SIM unit for meters, the SI for millimeters, the US for feet, and the US for inch, and the respective uh, derivative uh, uh, units. So we see again that the steps that I discussed earlier correspond to the three icons of steps. We have the start, the analysis conditions, and the analysis results for the uh, each case, excuse me. And now we have start step and the analysis case here is what you would choose what type of analysis you want to run. As you can see, these are the analysis we have available right now. We have the standard linear static model, heat transfer, thermal stress, pre-stress, and topology optimization. And then more advanced that we'll not be covering today, like transient response, frequency response, random response, response factor and linear, and very and very preferred one in electronics package in the transient heat transfer analysis. Uh, the import card, this is just to showcase some of the type of files that we accept. We actually, in the new version, the 3.0, we accept even more, and it's been updated, obviously, to the new versions of CAD. Materials, you can select the materials, you can add your own materials and define them. As you can see here, you can create your own with elastoplastic and linear characteristics, so you can choose from our database. Uh, you can also add your own database and load, as you can see here or you can uh, edit our database of 507 entries. Uh, you assign these materials, and when you add them, you can assign them to different parts in your model. Or you can also, there's many different ways to add them. You'll see, you'll see. So now, assign these different ones. The contacts we have available right now are only linear contacts. We're working really hard in the next update where you'll be able to use nonlinear contacts. But right now, the contacts we have as well, allows for no vertical or horizontal movement, sliding contact which doesn't allow vertical but or normal and it allows a uh, parallel movement and then general contact does allows a uh, parallel and, and normal movement. So as you can see right now there's no friction coefficient to be used because we're not using nonlinear contact yet but you will select what type of uh, contact you want to use and then the tolerance which means that if you select two surfaces if you use for example manual instead of automatic like here then you will be able to select the service. But if those two services are not within the range, then they will still not be selected as contact just to make sure you're not selecting the wrong services. And now let's start. Let's start with the first tutorial. We're gonna open Midas Mesh for here. I recommend that you guys create folders for each one of the files that you're gonna use so all the files come together in one space and they're not spread out. Uh, we're gonna start. So we open Midas Mesh for now. And we go. This is the window. You can check your license here. You can see your program. Now we're going to create a new file. We're going to make an analysis case. In this case, we're going to do linear static. And now, okay, linear static. And now, I'm going to import the CAD, as we said. 
This is from the basic training, the package, it comes with all these folders. So this is the first tutorial. We're going to use the original model first. So this is the model we're going to be using. And now the material we're going to assign. Then we're going to use, because we don't have, it's not a lot still, we go to the database, we go to steel, so we're going to use the SUS304. Now once we have it here, we select it, select the part, and we move it in there. So now, as you can see here, it's been added to the part. So now this part is an SUS304 part. After that, we select the constraint. So we're going to attach this, and we're going to make it constrain these four holes. So for that, we're going to move on to the second step and access condition. We're going to add a constraint here, here, here. I recommend you guys that instead of trying to do this now, because I'm going to go through it really fast, you just pay attention to it and you save any questions you have for the end that we're going to have a Q&A. And then you do this at home with the recorded version that we make available for you. So now that I've selected the surface, as you can see, I'm going to use this function with a 30 degree pitch angle to select all the surfaces around. So now all the 16 surfaces are constrained. After that, we're going to add a load here at the hood. And we're going to use the same function again to select all the surfaces. Now, this is total. That means that force is going to be distributed along all the surfaces. Whatever value we put here, and we put individual, each one of the surfaces will be applied this amount of load. So we're going to put 250 in the x direction and minus 250 in the y direction. So that's done here. And now that we've set the constraints, we run the analysis. We're going to save it as bracket in the bracket folder. And it's ready to run. Excuse me. Okay, guys, we just finished the analysis in one minute and 30 seconds, roughly. One minute and 40 seconds. And now we see the results here. This is for the displacement. You can see this is what has happened on a scale of one. Makes sense with what the actual behavior would be. We can get rid of the fire fracture. We can see it continues or not. We can also see it undeformed. And now we're going to check the stresses. So as you can see, there's a stress concentration here and here that we're going to try to get rid of. And by that, we're going to create a new file. So we save this file. And now we create a new file. So yeah, so now we're going to do same thing, we're going to select an analysis case, and leave it static, and import, and we're going to put a modified one. So there you guys see that we've changed some parts, like this part is being rid of, and now we've added more material to this part, and different shape. So we'll see how that responds when we do the analysis. We're going to set the same thing, so we're going to select the material, add SUS304. And then add this part here. This US, so now it's defined. Move on to analysis condition. We're going to add a constraint. This, 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 this. Pew. 16 of them. Now we're going to add a load here. And 50 and 50 and there we go we run the analysis again we have save it as bracket two set the timer again So the analysis just finished in a minute, 30 seconds roughly again. 
So we see now we can the same results again. Let's read the form like this. And now the difference we're going to see is that in this new model, the stress has been moved away from this concentration because it's not concentrated here anymore or here. So this is definitely an improved design. This is just to show you the workflow of wood. And some parts would be with mesh ring, which you just use a model you analyze and then rapidly put a new model and analyze it quickly. So we're done with the first tutorial, guys. Now let's move on to linear static. Close this. Linear static analysis. Okay, so I'm going to go through this quick. You can just kind of review it if you don't know about what linear static analysis is, which is completely understandable. You can check what a porous material and deformation is. A porous is defined here. What type of force, the type of forces that there are. Type of loads. Type, it could be a reaction force or internal force. It also defines very well what stress is, what strain, the type of displacement, the formations, and also the relationship between the formation, stress, Hooke's law, elastic modulus. All this is defined very well here and explained. So you can review later if you want in the material. The type of analysis that there are static law, dynamic law, linear behavior, non linear behavior, and how if they combine, they come to create linear analysis. So this is the one that we're going to be focusing on linear static. This is a linear behavior of the material with a static load. You can also have all these other ones. Linear dynamic, linear static, nonlinear static, nonlinear dynamic. Uh, There's a differentiation, obviously, between linear and nonlinear that we explain, and they can be explained here again. Now I'm going to assume that we don't need that. We're going to focus on how the software is used. Then differentiation between static and dynamic load. I'm going to finish it loads this. Uh, we have a static load, the linear static has this attribute, static load, same direction, linear elasticity, and a minor deformation, because if there is too much deformation, then it will not be accurate. Uh, the linear static can be used to be translated in different cases in which it's uh, proportional. And we also, it also explains a different type of failure, different between the uh, ductile and brittle failure, and the maximum normal stress theory. The Tresca theory and the moment is three. These are three main theories of static failure. They use different ways of approach to the analysis. That can also be static. So now we're going to focus on the GUI for linear static. So now, once you choose a linear static uh, case, as you've seen, you have this, this uh, tools available. So you have the constraints here that are constrained, rigid link, and spring that will allow you to do different ways of connecting. Like rigid link is going to be able to connect into two elements. Uh, in a rigid way, springs got connected to elements with uh, some type of uh, elasticity, some type of stiffness uh, that you define in the constraints we've seen before. Gravity is going to allow you to add uh, gravity to the model. Load is going to allow you to, to add a load, a force of some kind, either uh, remote or at the point. Concentrated mass is going to allow you to substitute some type of uh, part of your model with, uh, with uh, an equivalent mass concentrated at a point that at the center of mass so that way you don't have to spend so many elements analyzing that part if you, it's not part of your of your design decisions you can add pressure you can add torque centrifugal force to the whole uh, model both centrifugal force and gravity need the the density of the material to be defined and force displacement if you want to like uh, determine how much is going to be displaced the initial temperature of the surrounding like of the whole model that you can set up and then you can set up specific fixed temperatures at specific parts of the model surfaces. You have a main control that will let you define how much uh, memory you will use on the analysis, so that will make the elements on the grid log smaller or larger, which obviously the more memory they use, the longer it will run, but the more accurate it will be, and then run the analysis. So as we say, I'm going to go through it so you can see the windows, the constraints, with the type of options for type of constraints, either on a point or on a surface, rigid link from surface to surface or point to point, and then rigid link when you do point to point, you select like the position of it. We'll see some of it, how we use it, don't worry. So we see, for example, here we do select this surface and this surface and how they connect, or we can create rigid links between points of the surface and then create one rigid link from the center of this to this other center, different approaches. Spring is pretty much the same, but you can select, you can determine the stiffness and see who is dependent on who is master, uh, who is the master point, which one is the master point, which one is the dependent point, excuse me. You can do it between points or between surfaces. Gravity again, you define any type of gravity that you want in any direction. 
but it, it, ne it needs for the density of the material, the mass density to be input. A uh, load, it can be on a surface, a point on a curved surface, the type is force, remote, or moment remote, for example, too, if you want to have it a little bit away from the actual uh, surface of application. The direction in which it's usually input vectorized. Uh, pressure load can be either distributed or even if it's distributed, you can define how the distribution uh, uh, works, what type of function it uses. The torque, the type of torque they use, the reference phase is the, refer the, the surface around which of the ax axis around which uh, the torque will happen, the rotation, and you define the value of it. Total individual is the same as in the forces to define whether all the surfaces selected or the objects selected uh, are gonna be, the, the value is gonna be distributed among them, or if each one of these uh, selected objects is gonna have the value that you put here. The centrifugal force, revolution in radians, you can select the reference phase that is gonna turn around the same as in torque, and you can say the angular velocity, angular acceleration, which I conjected with the Density will help you know uh, the forces that originate. And force displacement, uh, you can select any point or any object and select how much is going to be displaced in what direction, either rotational or translational. And initial temperature and uh, specific temperature at a point. And as you can see here, you can see how much memory you want to use. Only memory is to perform uh, a specific, uh, what type of memory you want to use, the RAM or not. And check the constraint to make sure that you're not running the analysis uh, to get to getting errors later. So that's always recommended to, to have this check. Um, analysis setting. This is how usually it works. It, uh, the program runs through is to do an analysis, geometry analysis, and grid connectivity calculation, and now the grid, and then initial grid size guess. It kind of guess what the size is needed with the type of memory that you allowed it to have. So the more memory it has, it will always try to estimate with more, and then it will move through it more fast connect. So it will see the required memory estimation and then check if the grid size is acceptable with the results that it's going to give and then it updates it and updates it until it finds some type of convergence. So we have the appearances again for example here is going to tell you what parts of the of the model are having issues with. An energy error analysis is going to also be available in the results section we will study that later in which you can check the type the error on each one of the parts and then the percent error we recommend that if it's not below 10 or 15 percent then that you should review your model and review the setup for the grid and possibly just increase the the grid size point value you can also check different point values in the results reaction force in, in linear study you can check at the at the supports you can check the the reaction forces so we also talk about it the result graph also allows you very well to see the difference in forces in between certain points now we will see all this and uh, by checking this new tutorial, the gearbox, in which you will see different ways of adding loads. So we're going to open minus mesh free again. Create a new file. Uh -huh. Start, analysis case, Get static. Cat. Now we go back, and here is the gear box disassembly. It's loading right now. There we go. Okay, so now we're gonna use uh, uh, the drag and drop selection to select everything. This is a new way of selecting the materials. So now in this case, we're gonna use the most basic material that comes in, which is alloy. We're gonna need to add any material, and now as you can see here, all the parts in the body are alloy. So this is another uh, different way of selecting. Uh, the material on that adding the material. Mm, after that, we're going to add the supports here, constraints. So we're going to move on to the analysis conditions. As you can see, automatically it's been defined as all welded, and we don't want to change that. So we just leave it like that. But you could change the context. We'll see that in a different tutorial. So now we add a constraint here. We select this, this face. So freedom, nice. So we added a boundary condition there. Now we're gonna start adding loads. We're gonna add gravity first of all because we want the whole model to be in a condition of gravity, of course. So we're gonna add it, but now because this is gonna be on the ground like this, in the y direction, we're gonna copy 
is this here. So that the gravity is acting in the y direction. So we added gravity. We'll see, you, you'll be able to see here how they're being added to the analysis tree. And now we're gonna add a load on this face here. No, on this face here. So we're gonna add a load, select the surface. Add here a value of 250 in the y direction. So we're going to have it diagonally going up and to the right. Like that. So we see the force has been added. Now we're going to add a remote force. So you can see how that works in here. We're going to check load again force but now we're going to change this to remote now what does that mean we're going to select this surface here and you can see it's remote right so it's going to be applied in the middle of this hole because we don't want to apply it on the actual surface and we're going to set a value of minus 300 newtons in the y direction But now we don't want this point to be exactly at the same level, so we want it a little bit elevated. So we're going to change the selection mode to label. We're going to select this point. I'm going to change the coordinate here to 450. So that it's a little bit elevated. Okay. And now that we've done that, see here on the loads. Now we got a concentrated mass. This part here, we don't care about it really. Like we don't know, we don't care about the stress in this part. So we need still for it to affect the uh, the results on the other parts, but we don't mind uh, analyzing. So we're gonna substitute it by a concentrated mass. So we select concentrated mass and we start selecting objects. Whoop, out, out, and you see how the center of mass is moving depending on the objects included. So. And now we just need to select the connecting surface, and it's going to be this one. So there we go. And we see this is the equivalent mass to the parts that we substitute. Now we're going to add some pressure to the Now we're going to add some pressure to the side here. We select pressure, select this, 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 this surfaces, these five objects. And we're going to add a pressure of 50 newtons per millimeter square. That's there. Now we're going to add some torque to the to the turning rod here, so for that we put torque, select the surface, and we use this to select the surface around it. And the reference direction, we're going to use actually the one of these faces because we want it to turn around this circumference too, like that. So it is also that surface. And now we're going to put a value of 200 newtons per millimeter. So that's our turning. Mm -hmm. And the back of it, we're going to add an enforced displacement here on this surface. I'm going to say that it's going to move in the y direction, oh, excuse me, in the x direction. We're going to make it move 0.3. Millimeters in the negative direction. And there we go. We have an important displacement there. And finally, we're going to add an initial temperature of 20 degrees and a fixed temperature for 
all of the parts. Of 50 degrees. Let me make sure I did that right real quick. Uh, we can do this always. You can modify it to check anything. Check it. Uh -huh. Okay, so we see all these the icons. Let's showcase the logs that we got it. Okay, so I think, yep, we're ready for analysis. So now we're going to run this analysis, save it, different folder this time though. This is the gearbox. So we're going to call it gearbox. Have it, we set the timer. This is gonna take a little bit longer. Okay, guys, we just finished the analysis. It went to like around 3 minutes and 10 seconds, 15 seconds. And now we can see the results here, real quick. You see that most of the displacement happened here because of the pressure. There was a little bit here too. You can see the stress. Concentrate on the surfaces. This is a very interesting tool. I'm going to show you real quick. So you see result graph. You can select. You can select this point and this point, and then we make it go in the negative z direction, and you will see this. So this gives you the stress, how it varies from this point to this point in a graphic way, and you can apply it to any surface. I'll leave it like this function. You can also check the reaction forces on the, on the support. So this is the support, right? So we do the reaction forces here and here. Calculate them, and it gives you the actual values to check that you actually apply them right. OK, let's move on to the, we're done with this tutorial. So we're going to move on to the next one real quick. So we're going to save this and I'm going to close it just to make sure. It's always good unless you it's necessary for you to close the whole program and reopen it just to make sure it resets every time. Especially if it's software and all, so you don't want to make it have too much information at the same time if possible, just to avoid any type of mistakes. And now we move on to the next tutorial, which is housing. We're going to do this tutorial so you can see housing. So again, the purpose of this tutorial is more to differentiate, to see the difference between uh, contact condition between these two parts or rigidly connection. You see how it's different, and we can see the stress concentration. So let's see. We start with step one. We're going to analyze this case. Let me static again. Oh, excuse me, actually. Let me move this. Uh, we got call it. We're going to call it with context because we can put out the names we want. Okay. So now that we have that analysis case, we're going to import the cat as always. Excuse me, there we go. Next tutorial, housing, okay? Loading it. Whoop. Okay, so this is a simple, it's a very complex part, but it's actually a very simple assembly of three parts. Okay, so now that we have this, we select the material. And now we need some new materials. So first we're going to add some SUS-304 again. So we go to steel, SUS-304. And then we still need another one, I believe. Yes. So we're going to go to the ASTM category. I'm going to add the ASTM-836. So these are the two materials we need. And now 
I'm going to assign them properly. So we're going to make this long part on the, the blue and the green parts. We're going to make them SUS. So I'm going to show you a different way of doing this. So we're going to do this part and this part. Holding the control key, you can select different ones. This part, I'm going to send the material SUS. And then this part, we're going to send the material ASTM 36. Okay, so now it's defined. Move on to the next step, which is as this condition, we're going to set a constraint. So for that, we're going to go right here. This is conditions constraint. So here and here, I'm going to use this tool again. I recommend for this tutorial, actually, I'm going to change it right after this. Second, to change this to five degrees. And you'll see that later, why it's necessary. Actually, it's for the second part, but for now, I'm going to change it so you guys know. That means that nothing that is less than five degrees, uh, will not, nothing that is more than five degrees will be selected in this curvature type of thing. Uh, so we add the constraint, sorry. And now we add the load. So for the load, actually, yeah, we should give this a 30 for now, sorry. 30 for now because we're going to select inside this two right here. So for that, we're going to do the following. We're going to add a load at the nose. So right here, right there, we're going to add a load of minus 1000 newtons in the x direction. To the left, so these four faces. Okay, let me see now. It's added like that. And now the pressure, we're gonna add pressure inside this tube. For that, to make it easier, we're gonna show only this part. And we're gonna add pressure. Select this, this face, and then use the pitch. And we have 23 faces inside the tube that have been selected. And you're going to add a pressure of 0.5 newton meters in your radius. Let me check that again, real quick. Yes, 0 0.3, 0 0.5 on 23. Okay. And now we're going to set the initial temperature. Let's just see all of them. Initial temperature of 20 degrees. And a fixed temperature for all the parts of 40 degrees. OK. And we run the analysis. We're going to save it as housing. In the house board. Set the timer. Okay, guys. Okay, guys. We're done here with the analysis in two minutes, and thirty seconds, forty seconds. Now we're gonna continue real quick. Okay. So this, you can see, obviously, it's deformed to the left due to the force. See, this is the thing though. 
the stress concentration around this part because the contact is welded. So there's no actual stress on all these pin supports that are actually holding the two parts together. So we need to fix that. This is uh, there's an excessively safe uh, simulation in which like, it looks like there's not going to be any stress here because it's considered that the both uh, surfaces are in welded contact. So we're going to change that real quick. So for that, we are going to start a new analysis case. Analysis conditions. And start analysis case. And now we're going to create a new analysis case and we're going to call it with rigid. Okay. And now you'll see how easy it is to change the analysis case. Because now, well, first of all, we're going to add the rigid links here. So now we change the pitch angle to 5 degrees. And that's because there's some uh, curved surfaces in the back that we want to avoid like this when we make the selections. So now the best way to do this is, is going to take a little bit. But OK, so we're going to select the 8 days here. Yeah, so we're going to do this one first. Uh, a rigid link, let's take this. No, this, this surface. There we go. Okay, and we're going to do the same with each one of these pins. So we're going to go here. So we add rigid links on this ones. We're gonna add all the rigid links that we needed. Now this is important, we gotta move. First of all, we gotta get rid of the context. So this context here, we don't need them anymore because you just added the bond. So this is off and out. Now we don't have any context between the surfaces because we have the links. And now what we gotta do is add the conditions that we added to the first case to the second case. And this is very simple, we just grab it and drag it. And then the loads. So, load. Yes, load. Load. This load. And this load. And we're ready to run. So we run the analysis, but we only run the remaining elements. Okay, 
guys, we're done here in less than two minutes. Let's see the same results for deformation have happened. Now let's check this. Check this out. Now because we've added the pins, let's see the stresses. And we see how this is more realistic. We see stress around the pins that are holding the chamber together here. There's two parts, and we can use other two parts. It's another way of realizing, changing the analysis and being able to change the analysis case without taking that much time resetting them under conditions and the logs. Okay, so we're done with this tutorial. And we move on to the third one. This is exciting. This is exciting. And we're done with this one. Close it. And this is the tutorial we're going to do now. In this case, we're going to see the difference between weld sliding and general contact for this case. So we open minus mesh free. And we create an analysis case. Well, no file, of course. No file. Analysis case, and now this one's going to be linear. Oh, excuse me, up there again. Okay, analysis case, I'm going to call this one. Well, there we go. Okay, so now that we've created well the contact, we import our cat, which we're going to be using in the next tutorial. HSM. Yep, there we have it. Beautiful H. And now we're going to add the materials. So we need only to add SUS304 again. And then we're just going to use alloy. So, so the bolt, and now it's going to be shaped like this. So the nut, the two nuts, the two bolts are going to be alloy steel. And the hitch and the two are going to be the SUS304. So that's done. Now we're going to add, oh, excuse me. Yes, we're going to add a boundary condition here. So, constraint in the surface. And then we're going to add loads to the surfaces here. So, we're going to use this, this, whoop. Now we have all the surfaces selected. We're going to have it in the negative direction, in the negative y direction, with a value of 1,000 newtons. So that it's pulling away. So we're going to see how the bolts back. So we just run the analysis. This one is not going to take long, I believe. This one, hitch gate. We're going to save it in the hitch gate folder. Down here in over a minute. So we see now that we have displacement, we see the form, yeah, and we see the concentration here, but sorry, the concentration starts here, which makes sense, but the balls have not really moved, which is not very realistic. So this is where no case can send. Well, we can also see, yeah, this is going to be easier to see how the box is not moving. We're just going to show, oh, excuse me. We're just going to show the two bond, yeah. And this, yes. So you see, there's no stress concentration here, which is not realistic at all. So we're going to fix that. How are we going to fix that? We're going to change the analysis case. It's also good to go here first before doing save us. So now we're going to save us as hitch case slide. Okay, so now that it's saved, excuse that little lapse. 
I'm going to change the analysis case and change the sliding content. Okay. We're going to use the same condition, so basically we're just going to move this here and this load here. And now the difference that we're going to make now is that we're going to change the context. So everything between the bolts and the tube, we're going to modify it to sliding. Same with this. Sorry. Okay, so we change this. We go run the analysis again. Do only running sliding. Okay, we're done here, guys. So now we see a little a little difference. That is going to come from, well, you see the boss now have moved. And we're also going to show you that now the stress concentration is around there. Still, though, we see that the stress concentration is all around the ball because there's no type of uh, parallel movement. So we're going to now try with general contact. So for general contact, we're going to do the same thing. Save and then we're gonna save. Oh. We're gonna save this as HK is but general. Okay, and now we're gonna create an analysis case. Oh, yeah. We're going to add a boundary, load, and we're going to change all this to general. Okay, so now that we've changed all that. Um, we run the analysis again on the on general contact. Okay, guys, we're done here. Hey, you know, it seems to be longer, you know, contact. So now you guys see the ball and check the actual matters, which is the stresses. And as you can see now, it says it's going to this part, which makes sense with the As you can see, general contact is the best application for this type of analysis. Okay, we're going to move on now to the model analysis. So we're done with linear static for now. 
Okay, so I'm going to just go quickly through this and you can review later the type of vibrations you can check. It explains the, the expression of vibration, how resonance works, what the expression of vibration is trying to tell you about the elastic and kinetic energy relationship, the natural frequency, the natural, the natural angular frequency relate mathematically and conceptually, and what they are, what the model shape is, what's useful, all this you should review it on your own. It's very useful. Concentrate about We discussed it before. The model table you will see later allows you to see the the different modes and and the mass participation factor of each one of them. Evaluate. You can also evaluate the different uh, frequencies at that point. And eigenvalue calculation. You can also set it up if you want a specific range. So now we're gonna do the drone. So we're gonna showcase all these features. Okay, so we're going to open the mystery. And create a file. And this in this case, model this time. Now, record the cat of the drone. Uh, no, the materials, we need plastic and ABS. We're going to add plastic. ABS. That's all we need. So now, let's do this. This part is going to be ABS. And the rest of them. Are going to be. Alloy. Okay. Now we're going to set the constraints. Which are going to be under here. On these little things. So, constraints. They have a, a different curvature. So we cannot use. The feature this time. Manually. So we do this here, here, here. Okay, so let's have this constraint. Now we are concentrating mass because we don't care about this part of the assembly. So this, 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 and the surface is going to be this one. Same for this one. I'm going to save it as drone, drone folder, and time to run. We're done here, guys, in six minutes and 30 seconds. So we can see here, this is mode 10. We can see the first mode, second mode, third mode, all the modes. You can check here. You can also, you also have the mode table. You can check the different measure, the period, the cycles, the ratings, and the eigenvalues. And then the more effective mass and the percentage of effective mass for each one of the modes and the total one. 
So yeah, it's a very interesting feature. Now we're going to move on to thermal analysis. So we're done with this. We're going to save it real quick. And now I transfer this again. All this can be explained in the manual of the difference between steady state and transient, nonlinear and steady state heat transfer, conduction, convection, radiation is very well explained, and heat transfer analysis and how that translates into thermal stress analysis, which is the data from heat transfer to uh, have a structural uh, study. Now we have the analysis goes through on the formation, thermal expansion, gravity, and thermal stress, and where it comes from. And these are the features that are going to be used: initial temperature, fixed temperature, the same way it worked in structure, the heat flow, the convection, the heat generation are different. Heat flow is heat flags to a surface, the convection to a surface, the heat source. So we're going to do the tutorial with a piston to see all these features real quick. So we're going to open mess free again. In this case, heat transfer. Import the cut now from heat transfer analysis. This piston that we're going to study. Material. We're just basically going to add material to alloy steel. No, we're going to add all of them actually. All of them are going to be alloy. Now we're going to start with first, we're going to set a fixed temperature on these four surfaces of 200 degrees. After that, We're going to set fixed temperatures here and here to of 70 degrees just to see how it will transfer from the head to the support, how the temperature will transfer, how the heat will transfer. And then we're going to select, we're going to select the head. Select pretty much all the faces. We're going to add convection, but we got to avoid the surfaces inside because those are the surfaces in contact with the two top here, 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 and here. The rest, we select the 68 objects. And we're going to put an ambient temperature of 176 and a film coefficient of 0.00045. Okay, now we're going to look at the shaft now. I'm going to select all of it pretty much. So we're going to exclude the faces in contact, which are this, 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 and this, this. So 38 faces in total, 176, 0.00045. Okay. Now we're going to look at the crank. Do the same. Convection. 42 faces. So we're going to exclude the ones in contact. So this, 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 this. This and this and this. 42 faces in total, 100 degrees, and 0.1236. Finally, we look at the arm. 
we say what do we say about the arm uh, same so we're gonna add convection to everything but the face in front So that's a total of 50 and 120 degrees, 0 0.0006. Okay, and we're ready to run the analysis. So run the analysis, save it as piston. And we're done here in a minute and 30 seconds, roughly. So we see here, sorry, we see here that the heat has been transferring from the top to the bottom gradually. That's the heat transfer. Now we're going to move on to the next tutorial, which is this board to see how the different types of thermal stress features. Now we open minus mesh free again. And we start by the file. In this case, there was stress this time for the cat. Use this board. Now and add some new materials. So we're going to first add some PCB. And then we're also going to need to create our own material. So for that, we're going to use this following bar. We're going to call it component. And we're going to have elastic modulus of 0 0.21. Poisson's ratio of 0 0.3, mass density of 7.8 exponent. Thing. Mm -hmm. Thermal expansion. Conductivity is going to be 0 0.05, and the specific heat is going to be 500. There we have it. And now, basically going to assign it this way. So the board is going to be PCB and everything else, everything else, pretty much it. everything else but the board. Uh, sorry. Everything but the board is going to be material. Now we're going to set the constraints. Here, 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 here. We're going to use the feature to select all those objects. Okay, now we're going to give a fixed temperature, oh, excuse me, we're going to give a fixed temperature to the surfaces here of 60 degrees, and now the fixed, and now the fixed temperature to this one's. of 50 degrees to the 
flux to this faces here. And I had set up C flux of 0.01. And finally, some convection, some of the convection. Uh, select first. I just need the board. Convection. Convection on this, except the surfaces in contact. Set it at 30 degrees to exponent minus 5. Okay, and now we're going to do the same with all the components, excluding the surfaces in go 30 degrees to exponent minus 5. So now we done here. We set a heat source real quick. This one is gonna be a heat source with our 0 0.1 to 3 zeros for life. And we're ready to run the analysis. Save it as more phone. Okay, guys, we're done here three minutes and twenty eight, twenty nine seconds. We can see. Scale a little bit. So displacement, we can see the stress. It concentrates obviously around the supports. We can also see the temperature distribution around here. So heat flux in a, in a big surface, and then we have the heat generation here, how it translates to the board. Okay. So we're done with the trans uh, thermal analysis. Now we're going to move on to the interesting step of topology optimization. So you can review all this about the difference between object function and constraints and all these concepts, design variables that are important when you're working with optimization. But the different type of optimization, dimensions of parameter optimization, the shape of the V, all this you should review, but we're going to focus on topology. The way it works, you can, it's also explained in the, in the PowerPoint for the basic training and how sensitive it is the main factor of the uh, optimization works with, the object function, how it's defined, and the constraints. And so this is the case of topology optimization. You can define what optimization you're basing it on. We're going to be working with stiffness this time and 50% volume all the time. The design set and the non-design set allows you to change what parts the program will try to optimize. And you can also uh, modify the, the, manufacturer, the manufacturing conditions. And the repetition condition because it's symmetry. So we're going to explore all of that in a second. So the first tutorial that we have is the pedal. And we're going to just check the different topologization optimization features that Mastery has. So we open Mastery as always, and now change open file, create file. We're going to create the case of topology optimization. With maximum stiffness and volume is 50%. And now we're going to import our cat file, this pedal right here. What we're going to optimize is the arm of the pedal. So we're going to assign a material. All of them is going to be made of SUS 304, but we're going to add it to our database. Steel. CS304, add it. All of them. There we go. Oh, no, my bad. Yes, 
guys. Okay. Alexander. We're gonna select the constraint, which is gonna come from here, obviously. So let me set the constraint. And then we're gonna set the load. It's gonna add it in pressure here, 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 here. Here, six objects, yes, and newtons per millimeter square. Then we're gonna determine which parts are in the design domain and which was in not design domain. So we're gonna move this is in the non design domain and the pedal is the non design domain. So only the arm is the one that we're going to be studying. Now we just got to go to analysis control and set the manufacturing condition to through all in the Z direction because it's going to be created like it's going to be filled like this from bottom to top to bottom. So now we've done that, we run the analysis. Let's see what comes up. It's going to take a little bit longer because it's optimization, there's a lot of convergence involved. Okay, guys. We're done here after 26 minutes. I feel like I just traveled in time. Okay, so you can see the result here. So this looks like it's the analysis that's performed, but now if you want to actually see what we want to see, which is this, this is the optimized model that the software suggests with a 0.5 material density. We can do more material density, and that gives us the option of removing more material, reduce it. And it's more. We're gonna leave a 0.5. We see calculated, and we see that we reduced like 33% the mass. This is an example of optimization. Now we can move on to the next example. So yeah, we save this, and now we will focus on a bore. We're gonna optimize a bore. It's going to compare what happens if we use the condition of, of, of symmetry and topology optimization. So we're going to we're going to open mesh free. Create the file. Now this is case topology optimization, same setup. Play the last one. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to select the material. It's going to be alloy steel. And the constraint, we're going to add a constraint. We'll add a constraint. Put it here. And then the load. Put it here. I'm going to have it in the negative y direction, so it's compressing. So that the program knows that it needs to add extra. Over there, they kind of get rid of that part. We'll see how the result reflects that. Now we will do an analysis control. Manufacturing. Now we're going to do the same thing we did last time. We're not going to concern ourselves with the reputation condition yet. The C direction again because it's gonna be filled like this, like the die is gonna go from the bottom to the top. Okay and we run. So you guys on the other side we're gonna save this as play 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 there we go and 
let's run it. Let's see how long this one takes. And we're back, guys, after 39 minutes and I think 30 something iterations. Yeah, I don't know what it should be. Yeah. Seven conversions find 38 iterations. We found the solution. So this is a the deflection that will happen with the given conditions and the pressure. And now we're gonna look at the optimized model. This is the model that it suggests, obviously. There's a lot of the, the load moves to the side with the lower supply, the, the mass moves to the side with the lower supply. You see we can change the density to higher density will give less need for material, a lower density will give more need for material. So we got like, like oh, around 60% we saved the material, that's pretty good. Okay. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this and we're gonna study what happens if we do it with symmetry. So we're gonna go back to analysis conditions, analysis case, and just topology, say 50%. We just gotta transfer the boundary and the load. There we go. And now what we gotta change in respect to the other one is here. We're gonna again do of course through all Z, but we're gonna add a repetition condition. So this repetition condition is gonna work. This is we're going to cut halfway through the model at 50. Oh, the card is 50. Yeah. Excuse me, I'm trying to find There we go. 50 and 20 in the XZ. So that means that it's going to cut here in the middle right here we're gonna go along this plane so this is gonna be the symmetry plane now we're gonna run the simulation again let me check yes everything correct and run the analysis again just a second position see maybe this one will take longer Okay, guys, we're finally done here after 46 minutes and 46 iterations, 45 iterations. So that took a little bit longer, but I feel like it could have been less if the relative error would have been adjusted because I was looking at the graph while it was progressing and it was almost done. But yeah, anyway, we got it. We got the displacement here, we got the stresses. And this is exactly, you see how the stress is mapped? So now we're going to check the optimized model. This first decision, the second one. And there you see, because of the plane of symmetry, it remains loyal to that. It, you see how this part is reinforced, but also is this side because we adjusted it to symmetry. And there's the density again. And we see a calculation of 60% again reduction. So it's we're reducing the mass by the same amount or using symmetry this time. So yeah, there you guys have it. This has been a wonderful webinar in which we've gone through all the tutorials. And now I'm sure you guys have a lot of questions because we cover a lot of material. So we'll just let it be from here to any questions that you may have. Me and, and I will, we will be trying to to answer them to the best of our ability. Thank you so much for attending. So now it's time for any type of questions that you have. Let us know and we'll, we'll be here to answer them. Thank you.